You may never need to write a single line of code ever again with this self-healing code generation AI agent. Today, I'll be showing you how to build your very own custom multi-agent framework that not only writes and critiques your code, but will even self-heal broken code by writing and running its own unit tests. According to research, developers can spend up to 50% of their time debugging code. And speaking from experience, it's the least enjoyable part of coding. However, it is probably one of the ones that has the most high value associated with it. As we move more towards an AI pair programming world, this does increase developer productivity, but it also increases the reliance on AI and eventually bugs. So if we're using AI to generate the code in the first place, why not use AI to help us fix it and improve it too? So for this, we'll be using OpenAI as the LLM, small agents as the agentic framework, PyTest for testing, and this will all be wrapped up into a Python repository, all available on GitHub. So let's get into it. So we're gonna start off by laying the foundations and we're gonna create our LLM backend file. And we're gonna be using, as I said, the small agents package for this. It's really minimal and allows us to create our agentic framework really, really easily. So it's very simply just a case of initiating the packages and creating a very simple function, which essentially just instantiates the light LLM model. Of course, using the GPT model uh, that you wish to choose as well. So that's it for this file. After this, we're gonna start creating the agents. And the first agent that we're gonna start with is the code writing agent. So I'm gonna copy all of this code block and paste it into the code writer.py file. Now let's dive into this a little bit more. And let's focus on the system prompt, which is of course a, a critical part of building any kind of agent or LLM framework. Essentially, once again, we're gonna keep it quite simple. Essentially, this AI agent, this particular agent is a code writing agent. And as we've specified, they're an expert Python engineer. The key thing here is that we're specifying that it should return the full contents of a single Python file that fulfills the specification of the input uh, context. And we're being very particular about telling it not to write any tests or to open the file at all. We literally just want it to output the text, the code text into a file. So that pretty much summarizes exactly what we want the code agent to do. And this second code block essentially is just calling the LLM and passing in not only the system prompt, but then the user prompt from the command line as well. And you'll see this pattern being repeated in some of the other files too. So now moving on to the second agent, let's create the critic. Now the critic essentially is going to review and critique the code that the previous code agent has created. So once again, let's just focus on the system prompt very quickly. Now this agent's focus is to hone in on any failing test outputs and the current code itself. And essentially its task is to return a complete replacement for the code that will be pasted into the Python file from the previous agent. So this agent's job essentially is to provide more direction and more instruction to the next agent to then actually improve and self-heal that code. And as we saw before, we're using a very simple um, class here to essentially just call the LLM uh, with the system prompt and the user prompt. And that's it for the critic agent. And it's gonna be a similar pattern for the test writing agent. Of course, the main difference is going to be the system prompt. So once again, let's focus on that very quickly. The key here is that we're trying to keep these agents as modular as possible. We wanna keep them as atomic and as simple as possible so that they are very focused on doing one thing as well as possible. So this agent is tasked with essentially just writing PyTest unit tests for the code that is under testing. We're telling it to just use assert statements, no printing, and then we're also telling it to essentially export the tests into a specific file name as well called test underscore user underscore code. And as before, we have uh, pretty much exactly the same class to actually just um, call the LLM as well. So now finally, we are going to start constructing the orchestrator. So the orchestrator essentially is gonna manage the interactions between all the different agents. To start off with, we're declaring some global variables at the top here as well. This basically just tells us where we're gonna export all of the actual code that gets generated and all of the tests that accompany it as well. So what it will do is actually create a, a new folder whilst the agent is running called work directory and it's gonna paste the code into user code and all the tests into test user code. So that's essentially just what's going on here. The next code block is going to be some helper functions. And essentially what these are doing is we have a very simple helper function just to extract certain information from uh, the code. And then we also have a helper function to run the PyTest command as well in, the, in a sub process. 
The latter will actually allow us to run the tests once we've generated the tests, which is really nice. And the next section is going to be the self-correcting loop. So this will be a slightly longer function. And I'm going to break this down sort of section by section. So essentially at the start of this function, uh, we're just checking to make sure that the working directory actually exists. If not, then we create it. After that, we are instantiating the different agents that we have. So we have the code writing agent, we have the test writing agent, and we have the critic. Then after this, we make our first draft of the code and we write this to the code file. And we also draft our first go at the tests as well. And we write this to the test file. And after this, we then start a loop. And for this particular example, I've set it as having a maximum number of rounds of five, just because you won't want this going on endlessly as it could potentially cost quite a lot of money since we're calling an LLM each time. And not only that, you may also want to debug something and dive in with a little bit more detail if something is just constantly not being fixed. But within this loop, essentially, we are running the Python PyTests. We're checking to see whether or not the tests passed. And if they did, then that's great. We, we've done everything that we need to do. And the AI agents have essentially not only generated the code that we wanted and the tests, but it's also passed all those tests as well. But if it doesn't succeed, then we go to the critic and we get the critic to essentially provide some feedback, which will then get looped back to the code writing and the test writing agent. And it will continue doing this until it passes or until the maximum number of rounds has been achieved. And that's everything that we need in the orchestrator file. So the last thing that we need is our entry point, which is main.py. This is quite a minimal piece of code. Essentially, we're just importing the self-correcting loop. We're loading a, a dot environment file just to load the open API key. And we're essentially just running the function. And then once the function has completed running and hopefully successfully ran, then we'll print the code to the terminal. It's worth noting as well that when we run the code, when we run the Python module, we'll need to specify a command line argument as well. And this command line argument will give us the user prompt for the agent framework. So in this command line argument, we need to specify what it is that we want to actually generate, what it is that we want this agent to write code for. So now let's actually test this system. So I'm going to open up a terminal. Obviously, uh, if you followed along with the readme file, then you should have created a virtual environment as well. And I've given some examples that you can test for yourself. So let's test this first one, which is essentially a quick sorting algorithm. So we want the AI agent to return a sorted list, uh, but we don't want it to use the inbuilt sorting uh, functionality. And you can see quite quickly, um, we've gotten code that has passed, which is incredible. So you'll notice that there'll be a few different things that get printed to the terminal. Um, as we're going through the different rounds of testing, it will specify which round that it's on. It will indicate whether or not it's, whether or not it's passed. If it has passed, then it will just exit straight away and it will print the code to the terminal. If it hasn't passed, then it will continue going through the rounds. But as you can see, it's printed the code, which is great. We can see that this looks pretty good. So now we can actually dive into this as well because it's outputted all of this code into a file too, into the user code file along with the accompanying tests as well in the test user code file too. So that's great. Like within a few seconds, we've got a working function that we can actually start using. Now let's try another case. And in this case, you can see that the self healing mechanism is actually working. So if we take a closer look at the output, you can see in round one, it actually failed, which means that it generated code, but the code didn't pass the tests. And therefore, we then had to initiate the critic agent to then do its review, provide its comments, and then go back to the code writing and the test writing agent as well. But in the second round, it did pass. So it passed all the tests, which is exactly what we want to see. So this second example really showcases how the self-healing mechanism works and how we can build this multi-agent framework that not only generates code for us and the tests, but then also self-heals the code as well, which is truly incredible. Now this particular example is uh, to implement a slugify function. 
So it's essentially taking a string and it's normalizing it in a particular format. So you can see from the input uh, prompt, um, it lowercases, it um, ASCII folds, and it replaces spaces with dashes and strips punctuation. So in theory, I could actually start using this to write my own code. And hopefully this gives you not only an indication as to how you can create your own self-healing code agents, but also how you can use this technology for your own benefit too. If you like this video and you'd love to see some more content around programming, development, and building really cool stuff with technology, why not check out some more of my videos and let me know what else you'd like me to build. Here are some more of my related videos. We'd love to see you back here soon.